Okay, so this tutorial is going to cover the basics of setting up some, uh, a model for lofting, uh, and then also going over uh, extrusions and sweep rails. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is, I've set this up with a set of curves here um, to do the loft. The loft is a, a, boating, a boat construction terminology where you have a series of ribs that then lofted together. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to go ahead and uh, select our curves, and we just type loft. And we can go ahead and create a surface. And what it does is it basically calculates the, uh, the transition between each one of those curves based on a series of points. And we can actually turn on those points if we want uh, using those. And so like I talked about previously, these are designed around grips that are uh, controlled by curves. So, All right. So it's really a, a basic setup there. Um, locking has a lot of functions in here. So if we start to loft, uh, we can look at some of these other guys. Um, you can start to modify how conformed that actually starts to uh, move to your base geometry. So you can uh, make this really tight. Hit preview to update that. Um, we can go for straight sections. If we want this thing, each one of those sections would then be able to be unrolled. Uh, that's nice if you want to take this to laser cut and fabrication. Uh, you can make them developable. Uh, this tends to make a mess of things uh, when you're using this type of curves. Usually, if you want to do something developable, you need to have uh, a consistent number of U and V coordinates. Um, that is, you have to have the same number of points in each one of those curves. Uh, we can, I'll go ahead and just make this back to normal. We can turn this, make it a closed loft, which will take the last curve and loft it back to the edge. Uh, this is less handy for doing what uh, sort of a wall type structure we have. And I'll, I'll go ahead and show you how that can work for uh, the next one here. I'll cancel out of that. If we want to do a closed loft, we might do like a loft this. This will automatically keep this in order. And if we want to do a closed version of that, we can automatically take that. Uh, it becomes a really effective way of uh, creating these nice closed forms. Uh, beyond that, underneath here, we can start to rebuild that particular geometry. And we can preview this. Uh, so this subdivides that uh, 10 by 10. This has uh, utility when we start to get into uh, applying scripts and rebuilding geometries and getting things to conform to other geometries. So go ahead and look at that. If we take this, we can start to look at this as a, uh, we can do things. Tonight. So take this in, in here. If we had uh, certain geometries we can take over, like if we take, uh, for example, my, so we're going to go through an extrusion here, we can take profiles here and we can just do a straight extrusion. I'm going to turn off the capping so I can show you how that. So we just take a curve type extrude. We can change the direction of the extrusion by going ahead and going typing extrude curve. We press D or click on the word direction. We can just start uh, redirecting the directionality of that. And then we can go ahead and start to look at each one of these guys in here. And we can, if we want to take those geometries, we can, and we have closed planar edges, and we can type cap, and it will cap those geometries uh, wherever possible when we have those things selected. So what we can do, though, is uh, for some of these guys, though, if you could look, this is clearly not a planar edge. Uh, so we can run uh, the tool here called the patch command. We just type patch, ask us for an edge here, and we can just go ahead and 10 by 10, we can create those nice little patches. This is some limited functionality. Uh, this is essentially good for rendering purposes, not so much for uh, creating uh, joined objects. Because if you look at this, what it did is uh, it's rebuilding a calculated geometry based on a uh, re, uh, rebuild of another geometry. And so none of these edges, even though they look like they align, uh, actually do not actually touch uh, consistently. So it, it won't allow us to join. So you can see that little crack as we start to get into this. And so if we go into shade, though, it gives us a nice representation of what that might look like if it were consistent. And in some of the more advanced modeling uh, tools, I'll go over how we can actually start to get those things to join and conform together. Um, but for rendering purposes, this is uh, relatively effective. All right, uh, and then some of the the next thing we're going to be covering here is uh, looking at how we can extrude along curves. So if we have our little core geometry here, I'm going to turn on the central. I'll start on. Let me go ahead and create a rail that goes up. I'll just go ahead and hide this because it's in the way of our view here. and just pull that over. So we have a rail here, and we have a uh, cross-section or a profile that we like to extrude along that. 
so we can type extrude curve along curve. So we select the curves to extrude. And then we select our path. And we can create a nice piece uh, of geometry. Another way we can go about that is doing a one rail sweep. We select our rail. We select our cross section. And that tries to maintain the orientation of the normal of the surface. So it gets, gives us a really distinct uh, solution relative to the extruding along curve. So uh, both of those two things perform similar functions, but uh, obviously very different. Let's go ahead and copy these guys out. Uh, for a two rail geometry, I'll go ahead and delete this. I'm just going to go in the plan here and rotate this around so we have some distinct geometries here. If you click and hold, I'm going to create a different kind of circle from end to end. And then we can use this and do a two rail sweep here. We select our first rail, we select our second rail, and then we it's going to ask us for our cross sections. So we go ahead and hit enter. And then it gives us a nice little transformation along that, that edge. All right, and so that's uh, some basic surface modeling uh, techniques here that we can use to create some of these guys that uh, will eventually lead into some solid modeling techniques.